Hello, this is John Spielman with the video version of this uh, Fortnite's column. And I'm just going to tab round and check that we are recording, because otherwise I will be being ridiculous. And we are recording, good. Okay, so I've called this one the patter of tiny feet. I suppose it's a question whether you think of pawns as babies or foot soldiers. But maybe the, the metaphor doesn't work, but I liked it anyway. And it's about pawns. And I started with a tiny anecdote about how when I was in a car on the way to a national club match a few years ago, I shared a car with a, well, there was a driver, there was somebody driving, and there, there were a couple of teammates in the car. And one of them started telling me, obviously he wasn't British because we don't have it, about his national service and how he'd been uh, in a border post. And it just wasn't at all pleasant because it wasn't a very friendly border. And it's very, very unlikely that anything happened, but he was stuck there opposite his counterparts. And then I produced a, sl a slightly facile analogy about pawns in a pawn chain sitting there eyeballing their enemy. And nothing really happens, but it can happen if the pawn chains get detonated somehow. Then I talked about um, past pawns, how a single past pawn well, can be strong or can not. And there are some openings in which uh, you play specifically to try to isolate your uh, and, and hoover up your opponent's pawns, particularly in the Grunfeld, the white D pawn. If it isn't strong, then it quite often get, gets caught in the ending and you have um, black surrounding it, maybe in a rook ending and then trying to win a pawn up. And I then said, well, pawns hunt better in packs. Connected past pawns are normally really dangerous. And if you have more of them, if you have an avalanche of the things, then it is absolutely terrifying. And then I've given some examples of these. And I started with two games from the um, Smyslov Memorial in Moscow a few weeks ago, in which David, or David Paravian um, who's uh, an Armenian Russian or Russian Armenian? Russian Armenian, I suppose. Uh, well, no, he, he's based in Moscow, isn't he? Um, that he had in successive rounds, he created a huge pawn avalanche and then he succumbed to one in the next round, which is pretty surprising because uh, they're not very common, really big avalanches, three, three connected past pawns. So here is column 153. 153 a famous number um it's the sum of the cubes of the digits so one cube plus five cube plus three cubes is one five three uh which makes it sort of i think it appears in the bible and things because people thought it was a bit magical anyway this is my 153rd column for chess space and here we go and we start with pankratov paravian in round seven of this tournament and he's black and um, is it slight? There's some slight glare on the screen, isn't there? I hope that isn't too bad. Um, I shouldn't think it is. It's probably more of a problem for me than for you, I would guess. Uh, and here in this position, your man thought for nine minutes and then played knight c3, which is just a blunder. So I don't know what was going on in his bumps, but it wasn't what should have been going on because he got into big, big trouble um, after c4. Because he can't take that pawn because a pawn takes knight. Um, and so he loses material. I don't know if you could maybe try to play a6 here or something funny, but you could still play bishop c6 if you had to. Um, I was thinking a6, bishop takes f3, queen a4, check or something, but probably. Anyway, he went back, and now black has won, has got his passed pawn. And it's just a ridiculous position for white, because these two passed pawns, sorry, black has got his passed pawn, it's these pawns and c4 and b4 really ought to win the game. Uh, I mean, they're huge already. He's, you know, a pawn up. Is he a pawn up? One, two, three, four. He's a pawn up with massive pawn chain. And... Okay, they played some moves. I, I don't know what the engine says, but it's not going to be nice, whatever it is. 
tried e4, he's got to make some mess somehow. And he tried e6 because, well, you have to do something. If you don't do anything, then black's obviously just going to win. He's maybe going to go rook h6 to stop e6. And Well, he's threatening queen h3 check as well, isn't he? Um, the, the, the best practical chance to make a mess... Uh, uh. And I better say, and of course, Queen H three check was threatened. I hadn't noticed because because I'm sort of I'm not really, uh, yeah. Anyway, so so now it's an absolute horde of pawns. And okay, he just has to be careful. He's given one back. It's now six plays four, but it doesn't matter. In fact, six plays five plays four now. But eventually, these pawns are going to do their business. Didn't even bother yet to swap queens. And all you need to do as black is to be sensible now to make sure white can't give up the knight for the three pawns takes it of course and he resigned so this was the first one of these and you have this massive avalanche of pawns in the center which obviously are going to win at least one rook probably both rooks for the three pawns leaving black a large dollop of material up so that was the first one um and basically what happened in this game is that after knight c3 white was lost it's horrible you know, there are days that just bad things happen. He just missed c4, I suppose. As I said, he did take nine minutes. Um, I got the record from the website. And yeah, that was the first one. And we'll go control R because I've added a note, a small note. Then this one. This was in the next round. He's black against Salin Shigirov, Paraviam. And now bad things. So he had a double black, in fact. Uh, at this moment. This variation's a bit unusual, but there we are, it doesn't really matter. I assume if takes, you probably take with the d-pawn. I don't know, I'm guessing. That's a good move. In conjunction in conjunction him with queen g3 the best way way to interfere with black's development sorry i'm sorry i, I wasn't intending to do any type typing at all i have actually proofread this this time which is a good thing uh, and I have a message, do I? Well, we can from Amazon. How exciting. Okay. Oh, you probably can't see it because it's right in the bottom right on top of my fizzog. Um, to deal with Black's development. Okay, and F6 happened. The bishop F6, I think H4 is a good move. Um, and White has a lot of space here. Black has managed to win the two bishops, but the position is pretty foul apart from that. He went f4. I think he didn't need to. He could just have gone knight d5 and had quite a nice advantage. Perhaps he should have done. I mean, it's not an easy position, but it's certainly quite nice for white. I don't know if he could maybe move the queen and try to play g4 as well, try to kill this bishop. I suppose you can play f5 anyway if you really need to. And this was a big battle, actually, where the advantage swayed round. Uh, white wins a pawn now, but black has got his queen onto the long diagonal. Queen f7. And th that's actually a really annoying move. If he goes king, king c2, you play a5. And apparently bishop d2 is the best way to go. Uh, which is not obvious to me at all. R king c2, a5. 
and rook d2 sorry uh, bishop d2 queen b3 g5 it says the engine and really likes it the difference is that after knight g5 g6 gives white the advantage does it Actually, no, this is a line. I said I thought it was probably better for white, but I mean, I like, I think the rook and the bishop in conjunction with the f pawn are pretty dangerous. But it's not that clear a position at all. I mean, it still needs to be played. Okay, what happened was they hacked away. And here, in time trouble, he had about 30 seconds or something. They were getting 30 seconds increment to move, but he had about 30 seconds. He played queen f1, and queen g1 was much stronger. Because because of the threat of queen d4 check or queen f2 check, you win the g-pawn. And once you won the g-pawn, you're perfectly okay as black. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with your position at all. I don't think there's any way to hold that pawn, is there? I don't see where there would be. Um, so that's what he should have done. I don't know if you could play f6 here, maybe, but not very convincing. I mean, <coughs> it should be okay. I tried to play queen h7 check, but it should be okay for black, I think. Okay, what happened was that he actually went... He managed to... I fiddled around this actually is the uh, ultimate mistake apparently bishop b5 is still okay which is not obvious because now he got a chance to have his queen in the center and the pawn on g5 and although black has many checks which is a pain basically the passed pawn should win now um and they continued um pawns are getting even stronger. You can't go to f7 because of queen h5 and queen e8 mates have to go away from the pawns and basically the, the the little feet have become thunder. Not sure why he didn't go d5 there. Oh d5 you play pawn equal. Um do you just go queen e3? And the bishop's loose, I suppose you do. Um, let me just try d5. I'm going to ask an engine. I think he just probably goes queen e3, doesn't he? Doesn't. Or can he... This goes queen e3. And nothing happens, okay. And the bishop is now not protected. So, I played some moves... And now he gets a third pawn. And, I'm, and as I said, I've done this mainly for the aesthetic rather than for the exact analysis. And this one, okay. You can't play h7 because of queen g6 check. But you go there. Um, and he gave up. An amazing counterpoint to the game from the previous round. That it is pretty surprising. Uh, you know, you've got this position where white has these, this absolute avalanche of pawns. Um, okay, that was those two. Then I said that um, the um, most famous avalanche of all is in one of the games between McDonnell and Labordene. And I picked it up off Mega Base. Uh, I didn't bother actually to get an annotated version I didn't look in a book so I'm not that interested again I'm just interested in the aesthetics of the avalanche at the end that's a mistake I mean why would you clear up clean up black's pawns when you can play knight b5 and bishop g5 is probably not a great move um, so here he took and basically um, you shouldn't take oh, I suppose he's worried about um, the space six isn't he um, okay so he should go rook d1 shouldn't he 
and 94. Maybe he's really in deep. Tr Sorry, they're not 94. Rook d1. Um, it's a better move, is it? a4, bishop c4. Um, rook a5. It's not very pleasant, is it? But at least you don't lose any material. Uh, liberating black centre. Unless he can... This is a mistake, but of course, but of course, threats of a4, bishop a6 were unpleasant. Uh, of course, the threats of a4 and bishop a6 were unpleasant otherwise. But rook d1 would have coped. Reasonably adequately. Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking these get this again, I'm getting more idea of what was going on. C4 is a pretty miserable move. I mean, you really don't want to play c4 because once you do that, you are um, making that pawn a deep, a passed pawn. And g6 would have been a good move, just g6 to play bishop g7 and then to continue the game. That would have been pretty good for black. You go g6, bishop g7, start playing f5 and e4. And white has to do something pretty special. I mean, you can play f3 to try to defend, but it's very unpleasant with those bishops and those passed pawns. Anyway, this is what happened. And he played f5, which leads to chaos. Uh, he decided he was going to kick the knight, and it was fun. Spay 4. So now white wins the exchange, but black gets a huge attack. C6, you have to... Um, e takes F3. Now you, now you can't take the bishop because of queen E3, pawn takes pawn, rook F2 and mate follows. So this happened. And okay, black is the exchange down, but he's got this massive pile of pawns. It's most unpleasant. I think probably there's a threat. And f2, and the pawns are rolling. Look, f1. Of course, you can't play bishop takes bishop because a queen e1 check. Queen f1, queen takes rook. Queen takes queen f1 equals queen. And bishop takes c8 would have been a jolly good idea. Uh, I think rook takes c8 now probably doesn't work, does it? This is the point. Takes c8, question mark, that. Uh, yeah, that's why. Because now there, there, there is... Sorry, question mark is there. And this... Oh, we don't need a, this. Now, the thing about this is that actually, if you're going to blockade past pawns, then bishops are better than rooks. Because rooks, if the pawns are together, that they they can't stop both pawns simultaneously, whereas a bishop in a diagonal can. Now, this position is very good for black, but he needs to play a little bit accurately. Queen c5 is a good move. Take, take here. Uh, if a3, a3 I'm guessing you can go bishop b3, and you just win, don't you, of course, c7. White is a move too slow. Okay. So you get this position, bishop b4, bishop d3, of 
of course not rook takes pawn, rook takes pawn and this ought to be winning for black with those past pawns but white might be able to fight a little bit and the thing is the bishop does sort of stop the two past pawns but with the rook trapped and black able to try to play free at e2 it should be winning in a bit what happened was that they got to this position and the babies rolled uh, now queen f7 is probably a better chance really um, but you can go queen e1 to there this one wins and you can also go um, rook takes f7 that's also perfectly adequate queen f4 is the big move at the end once you play queen f4 obviously you're winning in the long term because the past pawns are going to roll though you're going to have to do a little bit of work you're going to have to maybe play h6 and king h7 bring your bishop out but eventually you're going to win obviously uh, it says mate in 12 actually to this engine I think it thinks that black is going to play h6 king h7 and bishop d6 and then he is going to be able to do his stuff and presumably if queen d4 which threatens to take an f2 then we are going to play d2 are we no we're going to play bishop d6 then of course because because then you don't go back to get, get, get to go back if queen b6 just e3 there's no i mean maybe and mate so this is winning but it would would have been easier to play queen e1 i think what happened was uh queen c8 bishop d8 and now it's completely over because nothing's happening at all Now with the f-pawn securely blockaded and black's back rank safe, it's simple, and it is. I mean, it's the bishop and d8 stops the d-pawn, the three pass pawns just trundle on. Do we want to have a diagram here? We probably do, actually. So let's stick a diagram in there as well. And it, uh, the rest was murder. And that's the final position where the pawns quite unsurprisingly are going to win well they're going to mate in fact aren't they it's probably mate in five or six or something according to the great engine itself but you can see that black's going to get two or three queens or two probably or mate in the back rank or something so that was a very famous game and very nice final position very very famous final position and while I was picking it up, the way I picked it up was I used a search engine in Megabase. So I'll just show you. I mean, people should know how to do this. But what I did was I went, I couldn't, I didn't bother to put their names in either. I went Control F and I went Position, just in case people using a chess base. And I just did this. And OK. And it took a moment or two and we got two games we got that one and we got another one as you can see which is this game and i thought this is not that exciting but i'll stick it in uh so i also stuck that one in this is just some ukrainian junior game not a great game at all by by white uh the first big mistake is mystery four isn't a great movie either actually now no, queen e3 is a mistake because it allows black to plug the hole and then to play for f5 and now already this position is fairly unpleasant for white check very nice intermezzo now black has some past pawns b3 is a mistake should play rook c2 but you're losing anyway that's the second pawn and all, I, of course I wasn't interested in the game as such but very much but I did enjoy the finish could have gone to f8 as well same thing 
And there we are. We have the three connected past pawns in the seventh rank. So, um, that was this one. And the final game is a game which I picked up in, what is the guy's name? Sam Copeland's. Um, he, he has articles on a different website. And I happened to see one of them a few weeks ago. And, and also this game popped up. Now, I don't think it's that amazing a game, actually. I don't think it's that surprising, but it is rather lovely. So this is a game from a Russian championship, actually. So they're bloody strong players. And what happens is that why you go um, in this position, you have to be a little bit careful to avoid some sh short term annoyances. But White's played the move orders correctly. And they started playing chess, and black has a slight space advantage, but white has a perfectly good position as well. Sorry, white has a slight, slight space advantage, but black has a perfectly good position. And they played many much moves of manoeuvring without anything very much happening. And okay, just before move 40, black should have played knight c5 and he would have been absolutely fine but he went knight c7 which was a bit stupid because rook to there is a very obvious exchange sacrifice uh i don't know if you should take with the rook uh let's just ask uh rook takes yeah maybe this rook takes c takes it wants to go actually knight e6 Plus equals. We'll give it plus equals. Uh, so what happened was um, that was move forty, and now his his rooks are mobilised. And okay, maybe he's all right. But White has a plan of t putting a rook in the A file on A four and playing playing B four, moving his king. Okay, I should say this. White, black, simply waits. White can play rook to a1 to a4. Sorry, to a1 to a4. Move his king and then play b4. Right, so what he did, he had to do something a little while. So he went d5. c5, I think rook d6 is given as a bad move by the engine, but this is such a hard position to play for black and so easy for white. that it's almost, he's almost bound things are good, bad things are going to happen. Uh, I think the exchange sacrifice wouldn't really have worked. I don't know if he could have played b6 here, whether the guy would still have tried to play. So, it looks like he's going to get a rook takes c5 check, but now he plays a lovely move. It is a very pretty move. It's not so difficult. It's just a question of believing in your babies, in your, in your past pawns. b4, two exclaims, beautiful. Now the question is, is this difficult to do? It's difficult to do because if it goes wrong, you might look stupid. But is it actually difficult to do in terms of, is there any danger for white? And I don't think there is really. Because he's got this huge, huge phalanx. And they're just, you know, it's going to take a few moves to land. But as long as black can't set up a passed pawn himself on the queen side, and that's going to be very difficult to do, then the pawns are going to roll and eventually they're going to take both rooks and probably have one left at the end. So if I ask an engine, Houdini, who often says everything's equal, he says plus minus, he says plus three pawns. Uh, although actually in formal terms you have a knight and three pawns for two rooks, so you ought to be minus four. Yeah, I mean not in formal terms, but if you just, if you just counted beams without thinking about where the beans were. And I don't know if he could have 
caused a bit of trouble, but he didn't manage to do much. And on they rolled. Yeah, I mean, F5 trying to make trouble. Up to the seventh. Perhaps he should have gone G4 first. I don't know. Maybe he could have gone G4 first and then... Well, if he goes G4 first and then F5, I guess everything's going to land before the h pawn. Check here. Uh, I assume if he goes somewhere else, you, you mate him probably. If the king tries to go in front, you're going to play d6 and d7 and king b6 and d8 if it's queen mate or something. Or c7 mate, good heavens. Checked to deflect the king. And we get to that position. And it is very beautiful, isn't it? It's a very beautiful position. What a picture, I said. You're now winning both rooks and you're going to have some change left. You're pretty, by change we mean that you're going to have a knight and a couple of passed pawns and you're going to queen first. So black had to resign. So the question is, first, is um, rook b5 inspired? I think it's not inspired at all. I think it's just a blunder to play knight c7. Even if it's a perfectly playable move, it's stupid. By the way, you're not threatened to take... Well, you are threatened to take the rook because you can go rook a6 and round. But after this, which is an easy move to play, then there's no danger whatsoever for white. And white is playing and black isn't. So it's, it's a pretty grim position already. And... Okay, the engine initially says it's defensible, which it may be for it. I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter. And he got his rook out, great, but he's got such a horrible position. Now, I think perhaps you should try b6 now. Can you try b6 now, or do you just take it? This you probably can take, can't you? Because now if e5 check, you can just go here or something, and you put a knight in c4. And this is a lovely move. But again, I would be ashamed if I didn't play it. Actually, c6 is also... c6, b takes a5, b6 is... Here, white only has three pawns. Only. We'll put that in inverted commas. And I do still have a UK, UK keyboard. Has three connected plus pawns. You know, Mr. Windows tries tends to jump back into an American keyboard whenever it has a chance. Uh, past pawns, but they are further advanced. And actually, in some ways, this is a more sensible way to do it. Uh, So, so although it's less aesthetic, aesthetic, it might have been been more practical. Because you're always a little bit uh, worried when you play. Um, I mean, you're worried here that white will, black will manage to give up both rooks for the three pawns. But how is he possibly going to do that? You're going to play. King B, King B5 or something and B6 and King B6 and you're going to be able to manage to get your boys through. You wonder can Black possibly set up a pass pawn on the Queen's side but actually it's not going to be possible. So this in some ways might have been a slightly more practical way to do it but either is going to win easily because you cannot defend against that many pass pawns. It ain't possible. So a beautiful five games in which there were avalanches and i hope you've enjoyed them and i'll be back in a fortnight presumably i'm writing this now on the what am i doing it i'm just is it the third today i think it's the third it's friday the third and so this will come out on the 5th of september and then the next column will be on the 19th so i hope you've enjoyed this and see you in a fortnight, and bye. Cheers.